Hello everybody, my name is Natalia Lee and I'm the author of the young adult novels Highborn and Way of Spears and I am joining you for another tea time today. I've got my cute owl mug with me and I just wanted to chat with you about how editing Song of the Dryad is going right now and I just wanted to like sit down and get it off my chest because editing is hard and I just want to kind of share my struggles with you. So my betas, like I've said before, have completely finished the beta reading process, which means I am now in the process of editing Song of the Dryad again. So I am creating the third draft of my manuscript. And most of the time, I absolutely love it because I much prefer editing over drafting. Drafting to me is incredibly difficult because I'm creating something brand new. I'm creating something out of nothing. And that's that's really hard for me. Uh, but when it comes to editing, I'm taking something that I already created and I'm polishing it, I'm strengthening it, I'm, you know, realigning things that may have been put together incorrectly. So I tend to enjoy it a lot more than drafting. But there's also a kind of seriousness to it because in these stages of editing, I'm fixing things that I messed up before. So when you're drafting, um, depending on the type of writer that you are, uh, it can be okay to just write things that will need to be changed later. Um, some people are okay with doing that. I struggle with it a bit, which is one of the reasons I struggle with drafting so much is because I don't want to write things wrong. Like I don't want to write something and then know that I have to go back and fix it later, even though that will always happen. Um, but the editing stage is really taking all those screw ups and fixing them and making them look pretty. And right now I'm working on chapter nine and it's going well, but when I sat down to edit chapter nine last night, so Saturday night, I realized that I had been kind of not lazy necessarily. I wasn't lazy in editing chapters six, seven, and eight. But there was a problem within those chapters that I was kind of avoiding. Like I had made changes in an attempt to fix it, but it wasn't completely solved and it just kept coming up and my betas kept mentioning it. So I knew when I hit the very beginning of chapter nine that I had to go all the way back to chapter six and fix the problem that I had been like tiptoeing around. And it was really frustrating because I knew how much work was going to have to go into it. And I got frustrated last night. I was talking to Greg about, you know, these changes that I had made and I was feeling really good. But then he was like, well, what about this thing? Or, oh, like, why is this character doing this? Or wait a minute, what day of the week does that happen on? And in talking to him, I realized that even though I had made major changes and I cut over 2000 words from the manuscript, which, well, which felt great. Um, but even though I had done all that, there were still things that needed to be fixed. And right now, one of the main struggles is the timeline of events because Song of the Dryad occurs over one month and it has to occur over one month because of plot devices and because of what's at stake. It has to happen over that month. So I have every single chapter and every single scene in the novel broken down into the day of the month that it occurs on as well as the day of the week. So for example, what I was working on this morning um, was moving an entire chapter that happened on a Tuesday originally and moving it to a Thursday so that um, some of the events that were happening would make more sense and they weren't as drawn out. So it was happening in quicker succession. So rather than an event happening on Tuesday and then the next event happening on a Friday, I moved it so that events happen Thursday and then instantly on Friday the next day, there are more events that are being triggered. Um, and that was not easy to do. And if anything, I guess I just felt overwhelmed in knowing how much I needed to change. And last night when I was thinking about all this, I was tired, I was hungry, I had had a long day, my eyes were hurting and sore because my contacts had been irritating them all day hence my glasses. I hope the glare is not too bad for you guys. But it was just one of those nights where 
It's like you want to work on your project, but you are not in the right mindset to do so. I was grumpy, tired, you know, angry and frustrated. And I knew that if I sat down to work on Song of the Dryad, I was gonna be lazy about it. I was going to miss things. And then I would have to go back and edit again. So rather than pushing myself to edit last night, I just slept on it. I kind of slept off all of my fatigue. And when I woke up this morning, I felt much better and I felt like I could tackle this project. And this morning I went back to chapter six, seven, and eight. I fixed things, I moved events around, and it's not 100% perfect yet um, because what I did was I had to like write, I kept one scene that happens on Tuesday morning and then the next scene after that jumps to a Thursday morning. Um, and the transition between those two is a little bit like iffy right now. So that's something that I definitely want to clean up. Um, and that might be something that I clean up in the fourth draft. But what's really important right now is that I am making sure that, um, you know, everything is clicking together and making sense within the time period that's allowed. And it's been really tough. Like, Along with the time period, the other thing that's been really tough is fact checking. Because when I was writing Song of the Dryad, I definitely did some research on like law enforcement and search and rescue and such, but I didn't do enough research to have a really good understanding of how it works and how quickly, you know, search and rescue would get out somewhere. And um, I, it's a little bit more um, complex and tricky than it is coming across because you know, if a hiker went missing in the woods, search and rescue would be out there instantly. But that's not how it happens in my book. You know, nobody's hiking in the woods. Somebody does go missing, but law enforcement isn't even sure if they were ever in the woods or if they, you know, chose to go missing or if they were kidnapped. Like, there's a lot of, like, muddy water surrounding what happened to this character. So I wasn't really sure how it would play out with law enforcement and search and rescue and investigations. And many of my beta readers pointed out what they thought would be the most realistic way for things to move forward. And it got to a point where so many betas were like agreeing with one another without knowing it, because my betas can't see each other's comments. But so many of them were leaving similar comments that I knew it was time to fix the error that I had written into my novel. And that is why I wanted to come on here and say that editing is so hard. Uh, I do think, personally, I think drafting, the first draft, is much harder, but editing is not in any way a simple process. Um, you know, simply going through the manuscript and cleaning up your typos and adding a bit more, like, glitter here and there and making things sound good, you know, sound better, I should say, that's easier than the first few rounds of edits because the first few rounds of edits are completely moving things around, getting rid of characters, you know, compiling characters, bringing new characters in. Like you're doing so much restructuring of the novel that it can feel in incredibly overwhelming because there is so much to be done. And I'm definitely feeling a little bit overwhelmed just because there was so much junk in the first third of the novel that needed to be fixed. And as I'm working my way through it, like one scene at a time, one chapter at a time, I'm feeling a little bit better. But if you look at the whole thing all at once, you know, if you look at all the problems that you need to fix all at once, it can make you feel really like glum about trying to get back to your project. So if you are in the middle of editing right now, I would highly recommend breaking it down into, you know, scene by scene or chapter by chapter or you know, maybe there's like one big problem that you need to fix and you want to go through the manuscript and fix that problem throughout the entire manuscript before going back and starting on another one. You know, whatever method works best for you, I just recommend that you try to look at it in small pieces and like in small chunks, one step at a time. Because if you allow yourself to get overwhelmed, then it can get scary and then you might not even want to go back to your novel and work on it again. And that's actually something that has happened to me in the past. Um, I wrote a novel called Fire Tongue, which I am still absolutely in love with. And I've been thinking of it a lot lately. And I have half a mind to go back to Fire Tongue when I am completely done with Song of the Dryad. 
Um, but that's, that's for another tea time video. That's in the future that we'll be chatting about that and what my future plans are. Um, but with that novel, I completely wrote it. I loved it. I went back to edit it and I knew that it needed so much work because it had, um, mystery aspects to it, you know, like a whodunit type thing. And I had no idea how to structure something like that. So it was a massive, huge, huge mess. And I started editing the first half of it, I want to say, and then I gave up. And after I gave up, I wrote Way of Spears. Like, I was just so done with editing Fire Tongue that I never went back to it. And I want to now, but I'm just using that as an example because if you get ahead of yourself or if you let yourself, um, you know, get too overwhelmed with the amount of work that you have to do, then it's... You know, it's so tempting to just say, I'm going to put this aside and start something else, but we can't do that. You know, we really have to continue working hard on the project that we've dedicated ourselves to and see it all the way through to completion, which is what I'm trying to do right now with Song of the Dryad. <sighs> so again, if you are somebody that's in the middle of editing or, you know, maybe you're just wrapping up your edits or whatever stage of the process you're in, Know that if you're struggling, you are not alone. I am absolutely struggling with edits. Uh, like I said, most of the time I really enjoy them and it's fun to see my work getting so much stronger. Like I kind of picture it as I have this, I've always pictured my novels kind of like a skeleton. Like when I write the first draft, I'm putting the skeleton together. I'm putting all the bones together. And then when I edit it the first time, maybe some of those bones are in the wrong place. I have to move bones around and make sure everything is really solid. And then you get to start dressing your skeleton up. You get to add the organs and the skin and then dress it up. And I really love the process of making my work come to life and making my work sparkly and polished and beautiful. And I really love the opportunity to do that. And I, I have been doing some of that in this draft but I definitely feel like most of that will come in in the fourth draft because even though I'm working on the third draft, there are still some continuity issues and there are still some structural issues that I'm trying to work out. And once I get all that clicked together, then in the fourth draft, I'll go back through it, polish everything up again, and I think it'll be really looking and feeling strong. It'll be at its best so far. Um, now, I did get a few editing-related questions on social media today, so I want to take a moment to quickly answer this. All right, the first question is from Jane, and Jane asks, what is the most difficult part of your editing process, and what is the easiest part of your editing process? So the most difficult part of my editing process is definitely seeing the big the big edits that have to be done, like the large scale edits that affect the entire book or that affect, you know, the entire first act or the first and second acts, you know, knowing that that needs to be changed and knowing how much work has to go into it to do that. Because once you have a draft, if you have to change something major, then you have to go back to the very beginning and tie it into the rest of the novel. Like the entire novel has to be changed after you change that major thing. And that's really difficult. Like not only the act of doing it because it is just so tedious and you have to be so thorough about how you're doing it. But also for me, like getting up the energy and, and getting up the motivation to do that is really hard because I have spent so much time on this book already. I've spent, you know, I'm coming up on 15 months, coming up on 16 months I've been working on this book. So I am both, you know, really, really in love with my characters. You know, I feel like I know them better now than I ever have before, especially in this draft. I'm coming to know my characters on such a deeper level, which is amazing and I love it. But at the same time, like I have been staring at these words for so long and I have been working with these characters for so long that, you know, knowing that there is a large scale change that needs to be made and knowing how much time and effort it'll take to make that change, is really difficult and I struggle to get up my energy and get up my motivation to do it. And that's kind of what was happening last night. Like I knew that there was a problem that I needed to fix and it was just like bouncing around constantly in my mind. But I also knew that I was not in a healthy like mental state to sit down and work on my book. So I chose to just sleep it off and then work on it this morning. And then what is the easiest part of the editing process is your other question. And that for me is definitely 
putting the cherry on top, like putting the glitter and the sparkle over my manuscript once everything else is all ready to go. So once I know that all the plot points are, you know, strong and the structure is there and, you know, the motivations are there. And once I know that structurally it all makes sense and it's really tight and nothing needs to be moved around after that, you know, so kind of referring to the fourth draft that I'll be doing, that's when I get to come back in and I get to play with language and I get to play with the words that I'm using and I get to vary sentence structure and just make it really sparkle and make it really come to life. That is my favorite part because that to me is just so much fun. Like going to a thesaurus and looking up different ways to say something, you know, to make it sound more whimsical or more magical, which is what I'm going for in this, you know, novel. I really want that magical element. So being able to do something like that and just polishing things up and, you know, adding those little details that really make everything shine, that is the easiest part and the most fun for me because it just like everything becomes so much more alive to me in that round of edits versus what I'm doing right now, which is massive structural changes that, you know, it's like they're kind of muddy and they're hard to work through and there's a lot, a lot of work and effort that goes into it. So that's the hardest part. And then again, you know, changing the language, adding beautiful, vivid imagery, like that kind of stuff. I love it. That is the cherry on top of editing for me. The next question I got was from Eva and Eva asks, what are you looking for when editing? Oh my, I am looking for so, so, so many things in editing. Um, you know, some people might think that editing is kind of just catching your typos and making sure you're, you know, typing everything in a grammatically correct way. And that's one of the aspects of editing, but I'd say that's one of the teeniest, tiniest aspects of editing. Because for me, I am looking for, you know, do the characters make sense? Are they behaving in a way that is true to their personality and to who they are? Um, is the timeline making sense? Have I fact checked, which is what I'm struggling with right now, you know, like, am I writing events in a way that would make sense? And I feel like it could be a little bit easier if you're writing like deep fantasy because you're making up the rules, you're making up the world and you can decide what makes sense in the world. But my novel, Song of the Dryad, is fantasy, but based in a contemporary setting for like most of it. Uh, so I still have to work with the rules of our world. I still have to work with the laws of society, which is something that I'm struggling with. Like actual laws and search and rescue and law enforcement and like, how does all this work? Like I'm trying to do my research and figure it out. So I'm definitely looking for that kind of stuff. I'm looking for, you know, did did I say that all this stuff happens on Friday and then in the next scene something is accidentally happening on Thursday? Like, is is that an issue and there's no continuity there? So right now when I'm editing, I'm really looking for the big picture problems. Granted, when I did the second draft, there was a lot of that too. So I have my rough draft, or well, my first draft, and then my second draft, I just did by myself, no beta readers, and that was a lot of structural stuff being moved around. Third draft I'm working on right now with all my beta reader feedback, which has been over the moon helpful. Like I had no idea how helpful beta feedback would be on this scale, and there is no way I'm going, I'm going back. Like from here on out, I am going to be using so many beta readers for every single novel of mine. Um, but so right now, you know, I'm going through all their feedback and I'm applying not only large scale edits, but also I'm using their, their feedback and their thoughts to really hone in on exactly what my characters want, exactly why they behave in the way they do. You know, I'm able to pick out if a character is not really acting in a way that's true to their personality. I've definitely noticed some of that happening. There's one character that I'm thinking of, like specifically who came across very, very aggressive um, and kind of violent in the second draft. And that was not at all how I intended this character. And my betas might know who I'm talking about. And I'm having to tone that down because it was not my intention and it's not true to the character. So I'm fixing that. And then again, in the fourth draft, what I'll be looking for is putting the polish on it, cleaning it up some more, changing word choice. So with each 
round of edits, I'm looking for something a little bit different. So if you are like going to be editing your novel, then try to set out with a bit of a goal in mind. You know, if you are just setting out to fix typos and grammatical errors, I recommend that you do that at the end after you've already done a couple other rounds of edits so that you're not, you know, spending three months fixing typos and then after that you realize that you have to cut the entire second act and completely rewrite it because then you're going to have to look for grammatical errors and typos again. So it just doesn't really make sense to do it in that way. Okay, so I am popping back on here because I received one more question about my editing process that I wanted to quickly answer. So the question comes from LMS Official and the question is, do you edit and apply the changes to the already written manuscript or do you do a complete rewrite with the changes? So this would really depend on how many changes I needed to do. So when I edited Highborn, for example, I did a complete rewrite. So I took all of my edit notes and I just started fresh on a completely new document and completely rewrote the whole thing. Uh, but with Song of the Dryad, it's a very different story because I outlined so tediously that everything is there. It just needs to be made better and it needs to be uh, organized a little bit better and just carried out in a way that makes more sense. So what I'm doing for Song of the Dryad is I am taking my edit notes and all the edit notes that my beta readers left me and I am just editing the already written manuscript. <gasps> Thank you, Greg. <laughs> You're the best. So something I might do if I had a lot of changes to be made was I would start a separate document. So I use Scrivener and if you're using Microsoft Word, you could start, you know, a new document there, but I would start a new like Scrivener project. And again, I didn't do this, but if I had more extensive changes to be made, I, I might have. And that's just start a completely new Scrivener project and then start building my story and my chapters from there. So that way I could kind of copy and paste what I needed from the old draft or the like original manuscript and then also be writing a bunch of new material and kind of building the draft that way. Um, but because of where I'm kind of sitting with Song of the Dryad currently, I am just directly editing the older version of the manuscript. You know, if I'm cutting large blocks of text or cutting chapters, I'm just saving them elsewhere in case I ever need to go back and, you know, get any information from them. But for the most part, I'm chopping stuff out, I'm adding some more stuff in, and then I'm just constantly saving and updating that document. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I really do enjoy just sitting down with my tea and chatting about what's going on because for me, like I love sharing how to's with you when it actually comes to the craft of writing. Like I want to film an entire video about what is filtering and how do you stop filtering like in your writing and in your novel. So I love doing videos like that to actually help you hone in on your craft. But I also really enjoy just sharing my thoughts and my journey with you because I think so often we see our favorite authors when they are in the spotlight and they have already achieved success. You know, think of your favorite author and are you only seeing them because they have been successful in their endeavors and in their career? Like if I think of Maggie Stiefvater or Lainey Taylor, who are two of my very favorite authors, I'm seeing them in a point in their career where they have worked incredibly hard to attain the kind of status and success that they have attained. But what was happening when they were writing their first book or their second book and they were struggling? Like, did they have months where they just wanted to shred their manuscript and throw it in the fire? Like I would have loved to see that progression with my favorite authors, but often we just see them at the high point in their career, which is why I really enjoy sharing these videos with you because I have goals, writing goals, you know, career goals that I feel are so far in the future, but I'm working toward them. And I really enjoy sharing my progress and my journey with you so that you know, hopefully it can help to inspire and motivate you and show you that, look, you know, I am struggling. I'm really struggling with editing right now, but when this book is finished and I'm so proud of it and it is so polished and I'm able to, you know, put it into your hands and show you what I've created, I want you to be able to go back and say, well, look, she really struggled too. So if she can struggle 
and still be successful, you know, in these writing endeavors than you can as well. So wherever you are in your writing journey, whether you are drafting or editing or you're in, you know, a beta reader phase or you're having your book cover made, like whatever point you are in your journey, I encourage you to keep working hard, to keep thinking about your dreams and your goals every day and know that you can absolutely achieve them. It's, you know, having days like this where you're frustrated and you're down on yourself, having these days and then pushing through them is so beneficial and you can learn so much from it. So my, I'm actually drinking coffee today. This is a tea time video, but I've got my coffee in here. My coffee has gone kind of cold, so I'm probably going to wrap this up now. Thank you guys so much for watching. Please remember to leave any questions or comments down below. I have a whole list of YouTube videos that I'm really excited to film for you guys and get up here. But remember, if there's anything like specifically that's nagging at you and that you really wanna know, let me know down below because I can always move my schedule around and try to get those videos up for you. I am going to go and enjoy the rest of my Sunday and I will see you guys in my next video. Bye.